Hello, and welcome to another installment of the Pug Slots in the Doghouse. I'm Pug, and here's what I'm thinking. Um, if you take a look at my blog, which you can read on cwupulsepug.blogspot.com, uh, the link is actually on the side of your screen over here, um, you'll find an entry in my archives titled New Year's Resolutions. Uh, in that entry, I gave out resolutions to all of the major sports teams in Seattle, including some college teams. Uh, the first one I mentioned was the Washington Husky men's basketball team, who last year in 2009 uh, won the regular season Pac-10 championship and lost to Purdue in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Um, I said the Huskies had two New Year's resolutions. One, go further in the Pac-10 tournament, and two, go further in the NCAA tournament. And the Huskies, I'm glad to announce, are the first team to achieve one of my New Year's resolutions I gave to teams around Seattle. And not only did they go further in the Pac-10 conference tournament, but they also won the whole thing. So uh, now they have a date with Marquette this week uh, on Thursday. Now, I would like to give kudos to the um, Washington Huskies basketball team. Although I'm a little nervous because the last week, if you view last week's entry, I gave kudos to the Central Washington men's basketball team, and the result this week was they actually uh, exited the playoffs uh, against Western Washington. They lost by 14 despite coming back from a 20 point deficit to take the lead uh, midway through that second half. But So I'm a little nervous to pump another basketball team, but I'm going to do it. Um, I do think the Huskies got a little lucky though uh, because. Arizona was upset by Stanford late in the season, and UCLA gave California a run for their money in tournament play. Also, the Pac-10 this year was really weak, and so every single team was fighting for their March Madness lives once the uh, tournament came around. Um, but you're in the NCAA tournament, and if you're a Husky fan and you're watching this, you can tell me to shut up because you're in it, and that's all that matters, so kudos to you. Now, this leads to my first ever request. Now usually when I blog, or vlog in this case, I try to give you an opinion or an analysis. Uh, but today I'm going to also give you a little bit of a request. The first request here in the doghouse. Um, now Washington and California um, are the only two schools that are representing the Pac-10 in this year's NCAA tournament. Uh, it's the first time in five years uh, that the school that the uh, Pac-10 is only sending uh, two teams, and uh, they for the last five years they've sent uh, about four teams. Now, as I've said before, the Pac-10 was very weak this year. Um, when you have your last place team behind your first place team by only a couple of games, I mean there is there is a problem. So I can understand why there are only two teams in this tournament. However, I'm already starting to hear from media outlets and friends that the Pac-10 is a poor conference, and if you're the friend that I'm talking about, I was going to talk about this uh, even though we had conversations throughout the week about the Pac-10 being a deep conference or a weak conference. Um, I was going to talk about this anyway. Um, but anyway, um, I'm not just talking about this year. I'm talking about the overall. The Pac-10 never gets any love outside the West Coast. I mean, this year was a poor year, and I'll give you that, but it's amazing to me that the Pac-10 no, gets, gets no love from anybody. Um, despite being very successful the past decade. And to show you how successful the Pac-10 was in basketball, I'll give you some examples. Uh, excluding this year, the last three years, the Pac-10 has sent six schools to the March Madness tournament, uh, which is 60% of their conference. Uh, in 2003, Stanford was ranked near number one in the country. In 2005, UCLA went to the Final Four and lost in the semifinals. In 2006, Oregon went to the Elite Eight, and Washington State actually made a couple of appearances midway through the decade, and they went to the Sweet 16 in 2007. Also, um, USC had a dominant program before they had uh, O.J. Mayo troubles. And what's even more annoying is, is people exclude the Arizona schools. I mean, people do not realize how tough it is to go down to Arizona twice a year. I mean, those schools are very, very good at basketball. I mean, it's, they're very deep. Um, they're always contenders, and despite these successes, the Pac-10 is always overlooked. So my request to Washington and California is 
please become bracket busters. I mean, I don't, I don't even care if you mess up my bracket right here. I mean, I, I really don't. I mean, both of you have east, uh, have big east opponents, so I know you got your work cut out for you. But make some noise for the Pac-10. I mean, obviously it's going to be very hard for the Pac-10 to get some love when you only have two schools participating in a tournament. But it will add to the list of reasons uh, why the Pac-10 is a legitimate conference and should be looked at. At not only a reason, uh, not only a regional level, but also at a national level as well. So that's my request. And before I go right now, on a side note, I just want to let you know my final four teams. Uh, they are Kansas, Syracuse, Duke, and Kentucky. And yes, I am aware that they all are number one seeds. And you might be thinking, well, the chances of that are pretty low. But all uh, a couple years ago, all the number one seeds went to uh, the final four. So uh, it was actually two years ago. So uh, maybe it could happen again. Just wanted to. Uh, uh, just wanted to say that. So this has been this week's installment of the Pugs Thoughts in the Doghouse. Once again, uh, you can check out my blog at cwupulsepug.blogspot.com. There's uh, the link over on the side of your screen, and uh, we'll see you next week.